A Fox Business alert, the U.S. has a new energy plan. The president signed this bill into law this morning, and the legislation includes incentives for ethanol. Some people love that, some people hate it. Calls for the phasing out of traditional incandescent light bulbs and increases in mileage requirements for vehicles built over the next decade. Listen in. The bill I signed today takes a significant step by, because it will require fuel producers to use at least 36 billion gallons of biofuel in 2022. This is nearly a five-fold increase over current levels. It will help us diversify our energy supplies and reduce our dependence on oil. Well, U.S. automakers reacting to the new energy bill. General Motors CEO Rick Wagner sounding positive, saying the government has, quote, set a tough national target that GM will strive to meet. But will the government mileage mandates be the death knell for Detroit? Let's take that question to our panel. Well, you have GM, Wayne Rogers, saying that, you know, we can live with this. So apparently it's not going to be the death knell for the auto industry, but is it going to be any good for them? Yes, I think it's good in the long run. Look, they've got, sooner or later, this, this was a terrific first step. But because there were certain things that weren't passed in that bill, I mean, the, the, the control of, of, of public utilities and how they use energy and how the alternative uses of, of wind and, and wind energy and sun energy, they were not in the bill. But this is a great first step. Detroit should have been doing it a long time ago. It's going to help them in the long run because they're going to have to produce a different kind of automobile, a new kind of automobile, and people are going to want to buy it. That's right. And, and, and certainly, Mike Norman, anybody who has to spend close to three dollars a gallon if not more on some east coast in the hawaiian state and not to mention california they're tired of spending all of this money week after week what do you think of the bill you were kind of making some noises <laughs> no i agree with wayne i i think it's good uh you know there, there are trade-offs here we're going to raise uh, substantially raise the mandates for ethanol and that's going to factor into food prices Will so we could have Detroit? an offset there no it's not going to hurt Detroit. Look, you go back to the 1960s when we had, you know, the Clean Water Act, and, and you could have said at that time, hey, it's going to hurt factories that were dumping their waste into rivers and streams. We had dead lakes up in the Great Lakes. We did it. Guess what? It created more efficient companies, more efficient businesses. Innovation uh, was an outgrowth of that. Detroit is going to manage, and it'll be a very positive but thing. But, Jim, was that because cafe of cafe standards regulated by the government, or did Detroit change because consumers wanted a different kind of car? Right. I mean, ultimately, these automakers are going to change. They're going to adapt to what consumers want and what consumers demand. I mean, the, I mean, the, good, I mean, the good part of this bill is it's going to force, uh, force Detroit to push innovations and new technologies uh, into the market much faster. I mean, they have a reputation for coming up with great ideas, but just over-testing them and over-consumer researching them. It takes forever to get to the market. On the bad side, uh, you're probably going to end up with more expensive cars, maybe like $2,500 more. You're probably going to have cars with more glitches. They're going to be pushing these technologies quickly into the market. Maybe they aren't going to thoroughly test them, so there's probably going to be more, you know, glitches with the cars. So I mean, so there is a, there is a downside, but at least the government's setting a target and not telling Detroit how to meet that target. They're letting them innovate, letting them come up with the technologies necessary uh, to meet these uh, these broad standards. Peter, I don't, I don't know if anybody's talking about how bad things are anyway in Detroit. I mean, we're talking about, is this the death knell for Detroit? Detroit has had some real problems over well, the past decade. They have a lot of problems right now. I mean, certainly they're on their back. I mean, the last thing they need is the government to be kicking them. Uh, but, you know, they've loaned a lot of money to people to buy their cars. They're not going to get paid back. They have huge unfunded liabilities for pension and health insurance. Uh, they're having a lot of problems. But I think fundamentally, you know, the federal government has no constitutional authority to be legislating fuel standards in the first place. These sh decisions should be left to the free market. If consumers want fuel-efficient cars, uh, then the, the producers will supply them. I mean, it's, it's not up to the government to be telling me, you know, what you know, kind of mileage my car needs to get. It's up to me to decide. Wayne, was you that you it, chiming uh, in? Go ahead. Uh, well, well, so I, I, I think some of this has to be prodded by the government. The reason for that, Peter, is you've got major automobile. But if you had 20 automobile builders out there who could thrive in the marketplace, you'd have competition. And you're right, the free market would dictate that. But you don't have that. Well, you've so got we three do. major automobile right. dealers, well, and then you've got some foreign automobile yeah, dealers. And foreign by automobile. the way, they do have to compete, and they will compete in this market for this kind yeah, of and new, and when you say high it's, uh, energy, uh, low energy David. using automobile. 
The, look, but Congress that, legislates. I mean, if you're saying the government has no constitutional authority, that's what Congress does. But they have uh, to why respect don't we say the Constitution. That Congress has no constitutional authority to apply tariffs, right. well, to apply uh, other means of, uh, you know, uh, they have, legislation, look, because, other sorts of legislation. Mike, you can't. That's a crazy right. statement. No, I don't Mike, know what you're because, trying to say. Just because they have the authority to do one thing doesn't mean they have the authority to do everything. The Constitution limits the ability of the government to legislate. They can't just legislate on whatever they want. No, unfortunately, today the government government ignores the Constitution. They do whatever they want. Uh, well, wait so, a minute. What, uh, Peter, let's no. just be specific. What are they doing that ignores the Constitution? Right. Well, there's nothing in the Constitution that gives the federal government the authority to pass these types of legislation. They can't legislate fuel standards. I mean, it, the well, Constitution... But there's, hold on a second. Hold on a second. You're, you started by saying they're unconstitutional, and then you said there's nothing in the Constitution right. that well, allows them to well, do this. How, Those are two different things. No, that's how the Constitution works. It grants powers to the federal no, government. No, but there's nothing in the Constitution about cafe standards. Cafe standards. Standards because we didn't have cars in no, 1790s. It doesn't matter if we didn't have cars. They, they couldn't pass those kind of legislations for horse and buggies. They couldn't. They couldn't come back and have and, you know and, how, how, how many Jim, how, you know Jim how, 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 you know, said, what your horse on, needs to hold be on, like. Jim Petacaucus. Listen, uh, listen, I left law school after a semester, so I'm not going to comment on the strict constructions <laughs> version of the Constitution versus mileage standards. But, but, but Peter makes a, does make one, one good point, is that if, it, if that this is an is a, you know, intrusion by government, and perhaps in the past uh, this kind of bill wouldn't have gotten through. But one reason why this bill was signed was really because it's also viewed as a national security issue. Pre-9-11, these kind of standards wouldn't have gone. Post-9-11, where people worry about energy independence, that's one big reason why this bill was signed it's, today. It's okay to view it as an intrusion. That is a matter of opinion. But to say that Congress does not have a constitutional right it, to do this is absurd. It, the Congress created the FTC. The Congress created the Interstate yeah, and that's Commerce Commission. Too. That, that, is, that is not unconstitutional. Also. It is unconstitutional. And remember also, you know, just a few years ago, the Congress was giving out subsidies to people who buy SUVs. Hold on, we've got the closing bell just 30 minutes away, so we do have to take...